situations we face in the field is the critically injured trauma patient. The patient assessment and management station is designed to evaluate your ability to integrate the assessment and management of a multiply injured trauma patient. You'll have 10 minutes to assess and voice treat the patient. The evaluator will read directions for the station and then a scenario to you. You are called to the scene of a bar fight. You arrive on the scene and you find your patient supine outside of the bar. The police are on the scene and the scene is considered safe. Okay. Uh, my partners and I are going to come in using the appropriate infection control procedures. Um, I'm approaching the patient. I'm going to uh, establish inline stabilization of the C-spine. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? Is there any response? The patient does not respond. Okay. And I'm going to uh, open up the uh, airway using the uh, modified jaw thrust. Uh, I notice that there's blood about the mouth. Do I hear anything? Uh, yes, you hear some gurgling and you also see blood in the mouth. Okay. I'm going to have my partner uh, suction the uh, patient right now and then I'm going to have my other partner assume uh, the C-spine stabilization of the patient. Okay, your partner suctions out the mouth and your other partner assumes inline immobilization. The airway is clear at this time. Okay. A key point to remember in most stations is to state that you will observe infection control precautions. It is generally helpful to begin the station wearing gloves. The candidate first stabilized the C-spine and opened the airway with a modified jaw thrust. In assessing the airway, he simultaneously determined that the patient was unconscious and noticed blood around the mouth. Upon learning that there were gurgling sounds, the candidate directed the treatment of suctioning. With C-spine stabilization managed by an assistant, he progressed to the next portion of the assessment, breathing. I'm going to come down and I'm going to check for breathing and as I work my way down I'm going to check the neck. Do I have any uh, tracheal deviation? There is no tracheal deviation. Any external jugular vein distension? Jugular veins are flat. Okay, is there any tracheal tugging or anything like that? Okay, there's inter intercostal retraction? No tracheal tugging or intercostal retraction okay. is noted. All right, I'm going to open up the uh, shirt to expose the chest. Uh, do I, uh, how is uh, my breathing? How is the depth and rate of, of breathing? The depth is shallow. The rate is approximately 32 times per minute. Okay, at this point, I'm going to take over his uh, breathing with a bag valve mask, have my partner uh, do that. Uh, with 100% oxygen, uh, 10 to 15 liters, uh, with a reservoir attached, uh, how is the air moving? Okay, uh, your partner uh, assumes bag valve mass ventilation with oxygen and uh, states that uh, the compliance is good. Okay, I'm going to inspect uh, the chest right now. I find that there's a hole here, so I'm putting my hand over the top of it, and I'm looking on the other side. Uh, I will cover this with a uh, non-porous dressing and leave one side uh, up. Uh, I'm going to auscultate the uh, lung sounds at this point. Okay, your partner covers the open wound with a non-porous dressing. Okay. I'm auscultating both sides of the chest. Okay, what do I hear? You hear decreased breath sounds on the right, good breath sounds on the left. Okay. I'm going to do a quick assessment of the chest to make sure that he's got equal expansion. Okay, what the chest is rising and falling symmetrically. Okay. The candidate's breathing assessment included checking the neck for tracheal deviation, jugular vein distension, and tracheal tugging. He exposed the chest and inquired about the depth and rate of breathing. He directed bag valve mask ventilation with 100% oxygen run at 10 to 15 liters with a reservoir. The evaluator mentioned there was good compliance. Upon discovering the open wound, he managed it with a non-porous dressing and then auscultated for lung sounds. Finally, he assessed the chest for equal expansion. Next, he will assess circulation. All right, now I'm going to uh, check for a pulse, and I'm also looking uh, for a quick uh, scan for major hemorrhage. Do I find any major bleeding? Uh, there is no major bleeding noted, and the radial pulse is absent. Okay. Um, I'm going to check for the carotid pulse. Do I have a carotid pulse? The carotid pulse is present. Okay. Um, what about my skin uh, temperature and, and uh, texture? The uh, skin is uh, pale, cool, and clammy. Okay. Uh, I suspect that uh, the patient uh, is in shock. I'm going to take a quick blood pressure. And before I do that, I'm going to assess, uh, do a quick secondary on his arm so I don't cause any further injury. Nothing is nice. Has.
Okay, what's my blood pressure? The blood pressure is 72 over 50. Okay, blood pressure is 72 over 50, so I'm going to apply the uh, pneumatic anti-shock garment. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to do a, a quick secondary exam of everything that the anti-shock garment is going to expose. After assessing and managing airway and breathing, the candidate moved to circulation. He assessed the vital signs by taking radial and carotid pulses. He checked skin color, temperature, and texture. He measured blood pressure and scanned the body for signs of bleeding. Volume replacement is usually deferred until patient transport. Although there is considerable controversy about the pneumatic anti-shock garment, you must either apply it or consider it. In addition to assessing circulation, the tasks to be completed in the primary survey are to assess disability with AVPU, neurological functions in the extremities, and assure that a C-collar has been applied. Be sure to expose the patient adequately for your assessment. Finally, a key point is to make the transport decision based on the patient's status, whether to call for immediate transport or complete the secondary survey on scene. The candidate will now continue by checking the areas to be covered by the PASG. A special note here. Local protocols vary for application of the PASG. The candidate chose to apply the PASG in this lesson. Follow your local medical controls policies when either verbalizing consideration of or applying the PASG. Okay, I'm going to uh, assess the um, abdomen, pressing in. I find anything? Okay, abdomen soft. There's no rigidity or tenderness noted. Okay, I'm checking the pelvis, pushing down, compressing the wings. Pelvis is stable. Okay, I'm going to expose the uh, extremities here, cut the pant legs off. I'm going to assess the uh, uh, legs. And I notice that there's uh, bruising. Uh, do I find deformity? Uh, yes, there is deformity and there is some edema. Okay. I'm going to come down and check for uh, distal pulses and nerve function by uh, pinching it. What do I find? The distal pulse is absent and the patient does not respond to the pinch. I'm going to have uh, my partner stabilize that uh, potential uh, injury uh, to the leg. And I'm going to come over and do an assessment of the other leg. Okay. Okay, nothing noted. Okay, I'm checking for pulses and I'm going to pinch uh, do I find any uh, pulses the, down here, distal pulses? The pulse is absent, right and the patient does not respond to a pinch. Okay. All right, at this point, uh, we're going to come up, and we're going to uh, apply a cervical collar. And before I do that, I'm going to palpate the uh, cervical spine. Do I find any deformity or anything uh, worth noting? Nothing noted to the cervical spine. Okay, my partner applied the uh, cervical collar. Now we're going to... Uh, log roll this patient up. Before I do that, I'm going to do a quick check of the other extremity. Be prepared to verbalize your log roll technique. Nothing noted. Okay. Pulse is absent. All right, we're going to log roll the patient up. Okay, your patient will assist you in the log roll. Okay, and we're going to apply the backboard with the uh, pneumatic any shock garment uh, laid out over the top. Okay, at this point, I'm going to uh, check the back of his head to see if there's any deformity or bleeding. Uh, do I note anything? Uh, nothing noted. Okay, I'm coming down. I'm checking his uh, back. Do I find anything? Palpating along and I'm inspecting. I see some bruising here. Uh, do I find any deformity of his back? Uh, no other deformities noted. Okay, how about of his buttocks? Do I find any bleeding or deformity or anything? Nothing noted. Okay, I'm coming down the back of the legs. Uh, reassessing again. Do I find anything? Nothing noted to the lower extremities. Okay, and we're going to log roll him back onto the any shot garment and wrap those around and begin to uh, inflate uh, the any shot garment and I'm going to continue inflating until I hear the velcro crackling uh, or until the uh, air exhaust out uh, uh, the exhaust valves. Uh, what kind of blood pressure do I get now? Uh, your pressure at this time is 86 over 52. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, further immobilize his uh, C-spine to the uh, full backboard and we're going to move the patient to the ambulance and start transporting to the hospital. Okay, we're en route to the hospital and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, place two large bore IVs. I'm going to uh, use uh, Ringer's lactate or normal saline uh, with macro drips and I'm going to use uh, 14 to 16 gauge needles and put it in the antitubal fossas. Um, on each extremity on each arm and 
and run those uh, wide open. Uh, what, uh, what do I find with my blood pressure now? Okay, your partner starts two large bore IVs, and your blood pressure at this time is 92 over 58. Okay. Uh, I'm going to continue with, with the IVs, and then I'm going to proceed on to my secondary assessment. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do a complete secondary exam of the patient. I'm going to start at the head and work my way down. So far, we've demonstrated the typical dialogue which occurs between candidate and examiner. With the transport decision having been made, the candidate is then required to complete a full secondary survey. Since the PASG was applied, the candidate already assessed and managed conditions found on the areas the PASG would cover. The secondary survey is a head-to-foot assessment, as shown in this list. The candidate must inspect the scalp, ears, eyes, and face, including the oral and nasal areas. The neck was assessed before the C-collar was applied. The chest must be inspected, palpated, and auscultated. The abdomen and pelvic areas were assessed before the PASG was applied. The extremities must be inspected with assessment of pulses, sensory and motor activities. Finally, the thorax and lumbar areas must be assessed. Fractures and secondary wounds must be managed appropriately. Key points for successful completion of this station are to first immediately establish and maintain spinal precautions. Locate, evaluate, and manage all conditions which compromise the airway, breathing, and circulation before attending to other injuries. Provide a high concentration of oxygen if appropriate. Differentiate patients needing immediate transportation from those needing continued scene survey. Transport the patient within the 10-minute time limit. Finally, be sure to specify transportation early for any critically injured trauma patient. So far.